Today we're going to talk about chapter 22, the diseases of the skin and subcutaneous tissue. And this corresponds to chapter 12 in the ICD-10 CM codebook. From your reading, you probably realize that ulcers are classified as either pressure or non-pressure ulcers. So depending on whether they are pressure or non-pressure, they are identified different ways. The staging of an ulcer is usually related to the pressure ulcers, and for the non-pressure ulcers, they're more identified by how deep they go. This particular exercise, 22.1, number one, has to do with varicose ulcers. And these are ulcers that are lying along a varicose vein, and they are classified as non-pressure chronic ulcers. And here we have the pathway to show you how to get there. And you're coding both the varicose vein and the ulcer itself. The varicose ulcer, sorry, and the ulcer itself. The ulcer itself is where it's identified uh, how deep it is. And the first code more identifies the fact that it's an ulcer on the leg. The next exercise is 22.1 number 5, and it has to do with a keloid scar from a previous burn. A previous burn, you immediately are going to think sequela. So when you're coding any injury code, your seventh character is an initial, a subsequent, or a sequela. And in this case, that seventh character is S for sequela. Scars are always considered sequela. Number 12 has to do with a gangrenous diabetic ulcer due to peripheral circulation problems. Whenever you see diabetes, it's a very good chance you're going to be coding more than one code. And the guidelines tell us we can use as many codes as we need of the diabetes codes to describe a situation or an encounter. In this case, we would be coding the diabetes with an ulcer and the diabetes with gangrene. They are two separate codes. Then you're also going to code the ulcer itself, which describes the depth of the ulcer. In ingrown toenail, you're going to be coding not only the toenail being ingrown, but also a cellulitis. If you've ever had an infected toenail, it gets very red around it, and that's that cellulitis. So you would be um, having two codes for this particular number 14. Now let's do some exercises not in the coding handbook. I've chosen this one because even though our diagnostic statement says bilateral axilla, when we look up the code, there is no option for laterality. So there are cases where that is the case, that you won't always be uh, looking for that laterality code, but it's always good to keep it in mind because you want to code it if it's there. Just as in CPT coding, if you've had that course yet, you would be coding uh, using a left and right modifier to indicate laterality. In the ICD-10-CM you want and PCS, you want to indicate laterality when you can, but in this case, there isn't any. And here's a case I wanted to bring up with stasis ulcers because they are very common in hospitals. If the physician has stated that these stasis ulcers are not varicose veins, they are not coded with an ulcer varicose vein code. They're coded rather as per peripheral venous insufficiency. So even though our code book does give us that without varicose veins uh, subterm, you could have also looked at it through insufficiency and found the very same code, either one. Let's look at the code books. I can show you a little bit about what I'm talking about there. We have here stasis, venous, and if you just read the first line, see varix, leg with ulcer. But if you read down to the next subterm without varicose veins, there's the I87.2 code. So just keep in mind a stasis ulcer does not necessarily have to do with varicose veins. Actinic keratosis, right temple due to excessive exposure to sunlight. I'm bringing this one to your attention because I wanted to show you, I don't know if we've talked at all about external causes yet, but I wanted to spend a little bit of time on that. 
This particular L57 category has an instructional note. Use additional code to identify the source of the UV radiation, and it can be either W89 or X32. So if we look at the index to external causes, that's located right after the table of drugs and chemicals. And if we go to this path, exposure, sunlight, it is the X32 code. But you notice that the code has to have seven characters, and that means we're going to need some placeholders. So let's look at the index to external causes. So let me just get you there. If you see here in my book, I have the tabs. Maybe you have some similar tabs for you. But I have the neoplasm table, I have the table of drugs and chemicals, and I have the external causes table here. So we're going to look at exposure. So let me get up here. Exposure, sunlight, X32. And you see that additional characters are needed. Now notice that if we were using a sun lamp, like a tanning bed, those are W codes. But if we're looking at good old God-given sunlight, that's an X32 code. So then you go back to the tabular and look up your X32. And when you get to X32, see this little seventh here? We know we need seven characters for X32. And the seventh character is going to be our encounter which I believe our documentation said it was an initial encounter. So our seventh character is A, but we have only three characters, X, three, two. So we have one, two, three. So then four, five, six are going to have to be X's, placeholders, for that seventh character, A, to be in place. And that's why you get this X, three, two, point X, 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 A. We won't do a lot of external causes in this course, a little bit, just so you're aware of them. But many hospitals do not use them. And if you hope to be a professional coder and sit for the CCS coding exam, they do not require the assignment of external cause on that exam. I bring this one to your attention, acute lymphadenitis by lateral lower limbs because in many of our codes there is a bilateral. There's a right, a left, and a bilateral. Depending on the code it would be your fifth or sixth character. In this case with this particular diagnosis you have separate codes, not separate characters. Not the same code with a different character but different codes for the right and the left. Just something to keep in mind. Now let's look at some longer ones. The patient was seen for initial treatment of a fine rash that had developed on the patient's trunk over the last three or four days. The patient was diagnosed with hypertension seven days ago and started on ramipril 10 milligrams daily. The physician determined the rash to be dermatitis due to the ramipril. The medication was discontinued and the patient was prescribed a new antihypertensive, captopril. In addition, the physician prescribed a topical cream for the localized dermatitis. Now, because the ramipril was taken as prescribed, it is an adverse effect and not a poisoning. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the dermatitis due to the drugs with a subterm of a localized skin eruption. That's not always given in the documentation, but in this case it is. So we would pick up on that L27.1 code. Then we would go to the table of drugs and chemicals, looking up ermipril as our substance under the adverse effect column, and we would get T46.4X5A. Hypertension I10 would also be coded because that is the reason why the patient is taking the medication. So here I have some um, the rationale and the pathway. And please let me know if you have any questions about that. We've done a few of those T codes. I think you probably know, feel pretty good about them right now.